Hi, in this video, we'll talk about actin microfilaments. So microfilaments are usually 7 nanometer in diameter and they're made up of actin proteins. So if we look at a cell, generally we would find these actin proteins or actin microfilaments in the periphery of the cell or the cortex of the cell. And literally they are present in any kind of eukaryotic cells. So they are generally situated in the periphery and microfilaments are flexible and relatively strong in nature. They are resisting buckling of the uh, cell structure by ki kind of countering piconeutron forces that are applied on the cell due to mechanical damage or mechanical stress. So they are an important component of the cytoskeletal system of a cell. Now they can be found in different locations like they can be found in microvilli, adhesion belts, cell cortex, contractile rings, phyllopodia, lamellipodia, cell cortex, or even in the stress fiber. So their organization could be very different depending upon the places they are found and they are broadly distributed in different locations in epithelial cells and different cell types. Now microfilaments, their function includes cell motility. So they are really involved in cellular movement. They are take an important role in cytoskinesis, especially pinching of two cells and separating two cells. And this is done by a actomyosin ring contraction mechanism. Lastly, change in cell, shell, cell shape is also modulated by microfilaments. So let us look at the microfilament structure, their assembly kinetics and the stability in details. So each component of the microfilament is known as globular actin. Indeed, actin can be there in two formats, in a soluble globular actin format or in a filamentous actin format. So filamentous actin format is basically a polymer of globular actin assembled in a specific way. Now each actin molecule contains a Mg2 plus ion and a ATP binding cleft. So ATP hydrolysis is important for actin polymerization. So let us look at the structure of globular actin to understand its functionality in details. So if you look at the actin structure, there are four subdomains. Now there is an important region in the actin structure, which is the ATP binding cleft, which binds to the ATP. And in the ATP binding con configuration, they could be polymerized or added up into the existing uh, microfilament. So ATP binding is very important for actin assembly. Other than that, there is a magnesium 2 plus ion which helps in polymerization as well. Now each microfilament is made up of two helical intercollected strand of subunits. Now for polymerization, it is necessary ATP gets converted to ADP. So ATP, ex ADP is converted to ATP and exchanged this exchange is important for it to be recruited into the growing strand of microfilament. So here is quite a lot of globular actin and this globular actin has specific uh, structural features. It has a barbed end and a pointed end. Now let us look at what happens when the nucleation of actin takes place. So the nucleation of actin is kind of a spontaneous process few actin monomers or globular actins assemble together to form a nucleus on top of which the subunits can be assembled. One end is known as barbed end and other end is known as pointed end. The rate of addition is way more in the barbed end in contrast to the pointed end. So if you look at the polymerization, you can understand there are it's a polar kind of structure which has one minus end and another is plus end. So in the plus end, ATP bound G actin gets recruited and in the minus end, ADP bound G actin gets dissociated. So ATP bound G actin recruitment is important for the polymerization step. Now there would be certain situation where the rate of addition would be kind of equalized to the rate of dissociation in an in vitro settings. And this situation is known as treadmilling, where the minus end has concentration just below the critical concentration, whereas the plus end 
has a concentration above the critical concentration. Let me tell you that critical concentration is a particular concentration range which is crucial for the polymerization of the actin filaments. So this phenomena is known as thread milling where it is broken down from one end and polymerized in the other end and the rate is kind of equal as if it looks like the rotating treadmill. Now let us look at a cell and try to understand that actin, it's not necessary for actin to be in a bundle format. So obviously actin could be in a branched format known as actin network. Obviously actin can be found as actin bundles. Also there could be contractile actin bundles found in a cell which is migrating and all of the different specification of actin is important for the cellular function especially think about a cell which is migrating all of these ne networks would be crucial for them to migrate now let us talk about few proteins which help in this polymerization process most important of them is known as formin formins are actually group of protein that are involved in polymerization of actin and they associate with the fast growing end or part end. Also formins help in the nucleation process and thereby forming or polymerizing the actin microfilament. There is another protein known as ARP23. It has a branching function. It can bind to an existing actin microfilament and initiate a new branch there. So a branch point is initiated by these complexes. Now they really help in stability of the actin uh, filament as well. But there are dedicated proteins which kind of cross-link actin such as fascin, fimbrin, alpha-catenin and spectrin which governs actin networks are stable or actin networks don't dissociate so rapidly. So these proteins are very important for, maintain, for the maintenance of uh, the rigidity of the cell or also the structure of the actin networks. Other than that there are proteins such as profilin which kind of work like a ATP exchange factor. So it exchange ATP instead of ADP and it would help the recruitment into the barbed end. Other than that there is cofilin which can bind to the filamentous actin and can sever the actin filament. So about these proteins which can really um, stabilize or destabilize actin filament association we would learn about them in a different video. But it's not necessary that these factors which would help the stability of actin filament is a protein. There are many other factors such as phalloidin which can bind and help to stabilize the actin filament. Phalloidin was initially isolated uh, from a death cap mushroom. Now there are other protein and other components such as latrancolin which prevents the subunit from binding to each other and forming the chain. So there are chemical agents which can also help or they can dissociate the actin filament. So I hope you enjoyed this video but just to summarize we looked at subcellular localization of microfilaments, assembly kinetics of the actin microfilament and regulation of the microfilament assembly. What are the proteins, what are the other factors that govern the stability and instability of these structures? We have looked at them. So guys please don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And do join my course in Unacademy, which is uh, India's biggest learning platform right now. And e-learning is promoted here. If you want to join, use my code EPI10 to get a 10% discount. Thank you.